Hi, my name is Jennifer Lyons, and I'm from St. Hubert's Animal Welfare Center. We're going to talk today a little bit about our volunteer program and the role that the volunteers play with daily operations. First, we're going to go over a little bit about St. Hubert's. We are a nonprofit organization that was founded in 1939, and we service the North Jersey area. Currently, we have four shelter locations, which are in North Branch, Madison, Noah's Ark, and the Mount Olive Everyday Adoption Center, located inside the Mount Olive PetSmart. Our animals come from owner surrenders, animal control, our sister shelter partnerships, which is part of our transport program, and disaster relief. We also have a training and behavior center that has classes and consultations for own dogs, which also includes some of our adoption alumni. We have a community outreach program, which includes humane education, a pet food pantry, low-cost bay and neuter clinic, a helpline, and a professional education series. We have animal control services for eight different municipalities, and this includes both domestic and wildlife. So some recent history about our volunteer program. When I joined St. Hubert's about a year and a half ago, I took a look at the program and saw that we're, as an organization, in a large period of growth, and our program was going to need to change to mirror that. So I set up about a year-long uh, goal for me to renovate the program and bring in some new ideas. At three months, we were going to add the feline friend and dog walking program with new training classes. At six months, the pet therapy program was going to be redone with a new handbook, policies, and a scheduling system for online scheduling. At nine months, we were going to expand the volunteer opportunities, adding things like photography, help with pet finder, and at one year, reevaluate. So we're going to go over some of the things that are going to be covered during the St. Hubert's Volunteer Management Apprenticeship Program. The first is the process of becoming a volunteer with St. Hubert's. The volunteers will apply online, and then they'll attend a volunteer orientation. During the orientation, the volunteers are able to learn about the organization and what we do as a, um, in the volunteer program. Then they'll attend a small group interview. This is when we get to know the volunteers a little bit better and talk about the day-to-day -day roles and what role they're going to be signing up for. They'll sign up for their first day, get hands-on training, and then I ask them to provide feedback to the volunteer office on how it went. From there, they're going to schedule themselves online for all the shifts that they're available and willing to do. We do ask all of our volunteers to commit to 10 hours of general service before they attend an animal handling class. Uh, this has a couple different benefits. The first is that it allows the volunteers time to build relationships with the staff and other volunteers. In roles like kennel cleaning, the staff and the volunteers are partnered together. Something like dog walking, they're going to be on their own. Uh, volunteers have time to learn where things are stored, what the procedures are, and what the daily routine is like. Staff get assistance in some roles that are less popular, whether that's the cleaning, the laundries, and the donation sorting. And the volunteers, they have time to think about whether this program is a good fit for their lifestyle and also the time commitment. Some examples of non-animal handling roles for our organization include administrative, donation sorting, greeting, kennel cleanings, laundry and dishes, Buddy's Boutique, which is helping with the register at our store, the front desk, and special events. Animal handling classes will take place in the volunteer office where they'll come in. As you can see, one of our office dogs here, Cappy, uh, they'll do the dog walking program. They have a classroom portion and then hands-on training. The off-site cat attendants will learn about daily care and the op how, sorry, how to do the adoption counseling. The feline friend training class is for all the volunteers who want to socialize with the cats on campus and small animal and bunny trainings. One of the major tools that we use in our volunteer program is Volgistics, and this is the way that we do all of our scheduling and a lot of the management. The view you can see right now is what it looks like to our volunteers when they're signing in to see their schedules. This allows them to sign up for their shifts, their orientations, and their trainings. We will also be going over the view that the managers will have. This is the back end of the program that will allow you to code the volunteers in certain ways, so it will determine what they can and can't view as a volunteer. The program is set up so that if a volunteer has attended dog walking, at that time they're able to view the dog walking openings. 
Another benefit of the Volgistics program is we're able to create and advertise position descriptions. This could be given out to people that are potential volunteers who want to see what the openings currently are, and it's also a great way for current volunteers to be able to see uh, what other opportunities there are that they might not be doing at that time. And lastly, there's a coordinator view. This is a great way to show a schedule to other managers in your organization. For example, if you have a shelter manager who wants to know what volunteers are coming in on what day to help with the morning cleanings, you can provide them with that schedule that they're able to sign in and see the most recent and accurate information. The next part of this presentation, we'll talk a little bit about some additional volunteer programs that we have here at St. Hubert's. We have off-site volunteers in eight different stores where they will care for our cats and help adopt them out um, through these PetSmarts, Petco's, et cetera. We'll talk about the different benefits and challenges to having these off-site locations, how to build a healthy relationship with the stores, how to recruit volunteers for stores that might not be near your shelter location, and how to advertise those cats to the potential adopters. Another area we'll discuss is the foster care program, from application to onboarding, and what kind of training is necessary for the fosters to set them up for success. We'll discuss the medical knowledge needed and how to communicate with these fosters. One of the most important things is the relationship between the foster coordinator, the medical staff, and the shelter manager. For a foster program to be successful, you really need all parties to work together so that you can make sure that they're getting the round-the-clock care that they need. We'll also discuss the Foster Ambassador Program and options on how these animals can be advertised for adoption rather than having to come back to the shelter. We do volunteer service projects as well. We work with corporate volunteers. It could be high school clubs, uh, local colleges and interns. We have junior volunteers who we advertise at home projects for and then they'll drop off supplies and receive a tour of the, of the building and we do special needs schools or at-risk youth programs. These are relationships that can be great for large projects, getting a lot of things done in a very short period of time, and we'll talk about managing that. Data collection is another really important part of volunteer management that I think sometimes um, is forgotten about, that you can really benefit your program. With program successes, this is something that you can share with other volunteers, with your staff, with your donor population, to let them know the amount of impact that these individuals have on your community and on your organization. Uh, here is a sample of some of our data we've collected. I'm very proud to say we have 25,000 service hours last year in 2016 um, because we have amazing volunteers. We're averaging 26 volunteers on campus uh, every day. So we're really fortunate to have the support within our community, and I love being able to share that information with anyone else who wants to hear it. <laughs> The data is not just good for the public, it's also very good for the manager. There's other data you can collect to let yourself know how you're doing as a volunteer manager, how is your program succeeding. Um, for example, on this chart here, I wanted to see if there was a correlation between the amount of volunteers attending the dog walking class and the amount of dog walking hours that were taking place. Together they are rising. If I had 12 volunteers attending a dog walking class and the next month my dog walking hours did not increase, there is some roadblock. There is something stopping the volunteers from giving those hours that we would hope that they would spend with our dogs. So that would be something I would look at. So collecting data on the volunteer manager side really has helped me see where my program is succeeding and where I need to spend more time. We'll also discuss um, implementing change and some roadblocks. Two most common questions I receive is how do you work with volunteer and staff relations and how do you work with seniors through technology? I talk about using online signups and online applications. How do you have seniors transition to that? Um, and these are two things I've really focused a lot of my time on, on finding answers for people. Um, we'll talk about assigning volunteers to a staff partner and getting them to work together both for the roles and for training purposes. And we'll also give an outlet to volunteers and staff to thank one another so that they know that they're being appreciated. 
Um, and we'll also talk about technology and seniors, explaining it thoroughly, giving a picture example, offering a training class. All of these can go a long way to transition them over to what they need to know. Some benefits to volunteer programs is that it adds to the quality of care and the enrichment that you can provide to the animals. For us, it's really helped expand our footprint. With the all-site cat locations, it's added counties that we hadn't had shelter locations in before. Um, it adds kennel space with our off-site cat locations that is ran by our volunteers. We can have community events that we're able to table at because of the volunteers willing to go there on Saturday and be part of a Main Street uh, festival or fair. It also allows for cross-pollination for an individual. Someone may enter or fall in love with your organization through one avenue, and it gives more options on how they can continue to be invested. Someone may adopt from you, and they want to continue to give back. They could become a volunteer. From volunteering, they could become a donor, or the opposite. You could have someone who donated, and later on, they come back to volunteer. It's just a great way to keep your community invested in what you're doing and your mission. So thank you for hearing about the St. Hubert's Volunteer Program. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck with your volunteer programs and have a wonderful day.